welcome back to Angie Seams and Pockets and um, it's February already. I feel like 2020 is going by way too fast but you know, no time to snooze. Gotta get some content out and that's exactly what I'm doing here today. So this is going to be part one where I show you how I preserve my patterns. Commercial patterns are a very important part of learning how to sew. They are a perfect guide to showing you how to put things together. They have really detailed instructions. They're also a perfect base for creating your own patterns as you get more advanced in your sewing and um, drafting techniques. The only problem I've ever found with commercial patterns is that they are so fragile. So as a creator, it has become very important for me to preserve the patterns. My first reason to preserve patterns is because I hate working with the tissue. I feel like it constantly rips, tears, and completely breaks. And some of these patterns are either, like I have a couple patterns here that are very vintage and they are, you know, at this point probably one of a kind still left and I really don't want them to get destroyed. Other ones are pretty expensive and if they tore in the middle of a project and let's say I have to finish this project, you know, in a week and there's no sale going on, I'd have to pay the full price for it and there's no reason to pay another $20 to get another commercial pattern. Another reason is because you can't use more than one size once it's cut out. This particularly annoys me because let's say I'm working on a theater project and I have to make three of the same dress for three different actors because of one scene where they're all supposed to come out in the same dress. If they're all different sizes, I would have to buy three patterns to cut out to use for every single one of the actors. And that is not something that I think should be focused on in a theater production. So with that being said, let's get into how I personally preserve my commercial patterns. So the first step to preserving a commercial pattern is obviously to acquire a commercial pattern. Um, so for this project I'll be using this Simplicity bodysuit pattern. So the first step you should do while still in store when choosing a pattern is make sure that the size on the packaging is the size that you will need for your project. In this one the size range from extra small to extra large which is perfect because I know I fall into that range. With this commercial pattern here you can notice that the sizes are actually numbered so 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14 and let's say you're a size 16 if you pick up this pattern you will not be able to use it for your project because everything in here will be too small for you. The next step will be to flip it to the back. So one of the first things you look on in the back is the fabric. So this is a pattern specifically made for knit bodysuits and they're sized for stretch knits only such as jersey, spandex, stretch lame, stretch velvet, two-way stretch, etc. To make the crotch lining and tricot um, and then if you're using plaid stripes or one-way design fabrics to make sure you pick up extra fabric. The next thing you'll need to know is the notions. On the notions this is where you find out information of everything you're going to need to make this pattern. So here it says you need thread, three small snap, and then for patterns A, B, C, and D, which is all of them, you will need one and seven eighths of a yard of quarter inch wide elastic. If you're doing pattern D or E, you will also need one nine inch invisible zipper. If you're just doing pattern E, you will also need three and a quarter yard of quarter inch wide elastic. The next thing you'll need to know is your body measurements. So for me, I will fall somewhere within the small range. So for this project, I actually want to make pattern B with the nice beautiful sleeves. So on here, I need to look for B bodysuit. If it's a 60 inch fabric, I'm going to need 1 and 3 eighths yard of my fabric. And I'll also need 3 eighths yard of 60 inch for the crotch lining. So those are just the important information to know. This is your guide on how how much of everything to buy while you're still in the store. So this way you don't go home and realize you forgot something. Once you get your pattern home and you pull it out, there's a couple things to note. So in the first box, we have all of the pieces that we can create front and back. On the second square, we have all of the individual pattern pieces laid out as they would appear in the patterns themselves and also labeled so you know which one to use. So since I'm working on pattern B, I will be needing patterns 2, 3, 9, 10, 11, and 12. In this project particularly, I can ignore the rest of the numbers. Next to that, you have your general directions, cutting layouts, and the rest of the package we can look more closely into once we have our pattern pieces traced and preserved. The last sheet in here are detailed instructions on how to put your pattern together. We're not going to be looking at those right now because we're going to be focusing on preserving the patterns for this part of the video, but we'll focus on those in part two. 
All right, so to begin preserving our commercial pattern, you will need your list of pattern pieces that we just went over. Next, you will need a plastic sheeting roll. I get these at Party City, and if I remember correctly, I got this for $16. You can find this in the area of where they have their table covers, and I like to get clear so it's very easy to see through. A Sharpie marker, a ruler, and of course, our commercial pattern. So the first step, we'll be finding the commercial pattern pieces we'll be using for the project. I already see 11 here, so we're gonna start there. And I take very good care at unfolding these to make sure I don't cause any harm to the pattern. So I find a pattern piece that I need to use in the project. I find the correct size. As you can see here, this is size small or 10 through 12. I line up my plastic as close to the edges as possible and then I'll use my ruler for the straight edges. So once I have my pattern piece traced out, there's a couple different information pieces that I like to include. First of all, I like to include the number of the pattern, which is 8513, size small, the pattern number, which is 11, the company that the pattern is from, so in this case it's Simplicity, and then I also like to put down what kind of pattern piece it is. So this is neckband. Any other information that you can find is also very important, such as the center front. I also copy down all the triangles or any other markings such as these circles. And then my grain line, which I prefer to do with a ruler to make sure it's perfect. Oh, and also how many pieces we cut out. So cut times one. And there we go, my first piece is ready to be cut out. I'm gonna go ahead and trace out the rest of them and we'll be back in a second. So now that I have all of my pattern pieces traced out, it is time to go ahead and cut them. Before I can cut them out though, I wanna make sure I put my pattern pieces away. So I'm just gonna go ahead and try to fold them up exactly where they were originally. And just like that, my original tissue pattern is 100% preserved back into its original state and I can pop it back in. Now I just need to cut each individual trace pattern piece out. And just like that, all of the pattern pieces I'll be using for a project in this pattern are cut out from this nice little plastic that is very easy to pin onto fabric and I had to cut absolutely nothing so I can use this for other projects. I can also use these plastic pattern pieces repeatedly for other colors or other fabric combinations and my pattern pieces that are in this envelope stay preserved and stay exactly the same way so I can use them again and again for different sizes, for different projects and all of my tissue is safe inside and at no risk of being destroyed. Now the last step would be to give these pattern pieces a home and I like to do that with Ziploc bags. As you can see here I have Ziploc bags from previous projects of pattern pieces that I've already cut out before. The first important thing that I write on my Ziploc bag is the pattern brand which for this is Simplicity and then I write the numbers and because the pattern tissue has a different pattern number than the outer envelope I'll actually write in both of them and with that I can take all of these pieces and kind of nicely fold them up into a smaller shape and with that my simplicity bodysuit pattern is perfectly preserved ready to be filed away and used as I need and if you stay tuned for part two I will show you guys exactly how I'll take this pattern that I just preserved and use it for a personal project thank you lovelies so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video